So I'm going to draw a map and go through how I do that. So I'm going to do this in GIMP and I'm doing it on my other screen here. So I will try to keep tabs on the chat as I go. Um, but uh, this is a uh, 3500 by 2500. Oh, it's, it's a new window, so it doesn't show you. Um, crap. All right, let me, well, I'm not going to worry about that. I'll, I'll try to fix that next time. Uh, GIMP's opening a new window. I'm only sharing this window, so that's, so you're not actually seeing when the little pop-ups, but I will try to fix that for next time. Um, but this is a 2500, uh, 3500 by 2500 image with 100 pixels per inch. And that's my typical size that I use for my maps. I like the size of it. It makes it so that the files are not super huge, and um, but gives you enough room to work. So what I'm going to do is, you can see I've got just the background here. I'm going to go ahead and hold Shift and just add a bunch of layers, just blank layers. And they're all transparent. Um, but the first one I'm going to go ahead and call it, relabel it as a solid grid. and make sure that that's the layer that's highlighted. And then I'm gonna go up to filters and do, oh, you can't even see the drop down menu. So, but I'm gonna do filters, render, pattern, and there's a grid tool. Um, and you can see that grid is very um, small. Uh, my image is 100 pixels per inch. So I'm gonna resize it to be 100 pixels per inch. And so the, these, uh, the grid is 100 pixels square and the lines are two pixels wide and it's set to a uh, color of black. So that's my solid grid. And so I can, you know, enable that and disable it. What I like to do with my maps is I like to make a, uh, a slightly fancier grid. So what I do is I do select by color, which is a shift O is select by color. Um, it's also one of the options under the tool here. Um, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit on here so I can see my the actual grid I just did. And I will click on the grid itself and you can see that it highlights that grid. And I'm going to zoom out now so that we can see the whole thing. Then I'm going to go up to a different layer and I'm going to call this one a dotted grid. And the first thing I want to do here is I want to adjust my brush. So I'm going to make it a black brush. Uh, I will do square uh, and it needs to be relatively small. So it's just going to be like five pixels. I'm going to change the angle of it to 45 degrees. And then the spacing of it, I'm going to make like 500. So as it's drawing, what I'm about to do is I'm going to, I'm going to draw, I'm going to use this brush to draw. Um, but the spacing tells me how far apart does it draw each each thing. If you make it, if the spacing is um, what is the default ten, then it's going to basically draw you a line. The, every it's going to draw a dot, and it's going to just draw them so close together that it's going to look like a line. So I um, I'm going to make it 500 because I want them to be spaced quite a bit, and I'm going to set the jitter to 1.5. And the jitter is as it's drawing that line. How far to the left or right is it going to put these little lines as I draw them, these little dots? Um, I actually need to turn the dynamics off because I'm not using anything like that. Um, and I think that is good. So then we're going to go up to uh, make sure I'm on my dotted grid. We will go up to edit and then I know you can't see it, but uh, one of the options in the edit menu is stroke selection. And you'll just select to stroke with the paint tool. And when it does that, it'll take a second, but now you can kind of barely see if I zoom in, it actually drew a bunch of like dots and you can see they're spaced, um, not right on top of each other. And what I will do sometimes is I will come back and I will do it twice. I will do one with these like diamond shaped dots and then I'll do ones with a, uh, a circle dot and I'll space them differently so that they show up. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to leave it as is and we'll, uh, We'll just go with that. So then if I unselect, so I do select none 
and then I'll make it so you can't see the solid grid anymore. And so you can see that it's all it's a this dotted grid now, and which I think looks nicer, especially as we get further into the drawing. It uh, it looks it makes it look good to uh, have these dots instead of just solid lines. But I keep the solid grid out there in case I want to use that for anything. And you'll also notice that you know it is a repeating pattern. It's not like it's completely unique. You know the, these these look like they're the same. And, and it repeats, but that's okay because as we start drawing in the the rest of this map, you won't notice that it's repeating. You know, there'll because there'll be walls in the way and and stone and and everything else. It'll, you won't realize that it's actually a repeating pattern. All right, with that, I'm going to go up to one of the other layers, and now I'm going to do a circle brush, and this one I'm going to make I believe like 15. And I'm going to just leave the rest of the, everything else as defaults. And this one I'll just make the jitter as 0.5. And this is actually going to be the dungeon that I draw. And I don't have a preconceived notion of what this dungeon is going to be. So uh, we're just going to kind of wing it. In a lot of cases, that's what I do. I will just take my dungeon and, and just wing it. I think what I'll do for this one is I want to make like a couple entrances into it. So it won't just be one entrance and then a bunch of rooms, but rather I'll make some, you know, it's kind of like maybe a hub where there could be, you're passing through it and then on your way to something else. So a couple things that I try to do is I, I, I'm just using a mouse here and I'm, I'll try to make some jagged edges. I'm working on getting another, uh, uh, drawing tablet. And so I can use a pen to do this, but, um, you know, I try to, the idea is that these are rough walls. These are not smooth walls, so uh, they should be jagged, so it's okay that the mouse isn't straight. Um, I'm going to get rid of what I just drew there. The other thing is I, I try to, if I'm making truly jagged walls, then I try to stay roughly around where my grid lines are, but not right on top of them. So like if I'm going to make a, a little entryway here, then I'll, I'll do something like this, you know, where I'm kind of all over doing like this kind of thing where it's like, yeah, you can see that there's, I'm still within the, the squares and there's a clear path for characters to walk, but I'm not sticking right up against that grid. Whereas if I'm making a, a, a room that is more uh, engineered, then what I will do is I will hold down the shift and control keys and that will actually let me draw a nice straight line that I can snap into position. So, and I'll go ahead and do that right here. And so now that gives me a nice, nice square room there. So for this one, um, so let me, I want to make, you know, that was that one room. This one's just going to be another little small room off to the side here. I don't know how big I want to make this. Sometimes I actually use the, the DM tools and, and will um, roll the, the dungeon and use the tables and the, the DM guide. Um, or sometimes I'll use the Pathfinder one to, to do that. Um, I'm going to make this one go up here and then... This is still going to be a kind of a rough edge and we'll cut it diagonally and then we'll come back down like that. What I don't want this to be is like a shopping mall where it's just, you're walking this path and you've got a bunch of, of rooms. You kind of want to make it so that you got to pass through some rooms and there's some side rooms that are out there. So like this one, we'll have it open up into some big, chamber and we'll take it out there and then maybe put a maybe put a column in there and that kind of obscures this so you can't see the other side and it's a good place for some creatures to hide and, and things like that um, and then we're gonna we're gonna take this oops I gotta make sure it's important that all the walls actually touch each other you'll see why later uh, I'm going to take this one again, trying to roughly follow some of these grid things. And I'm going to take this and bring it down here and then off the map. And this is going to be like a second 
entrance here into this dungeon. And these are good for, you can set up some other, you can have uh, this lead to some other important location or um, another, you can even establish a different entrance into it so the party has different ways that they could get in. All right, and then, so I think what I'll do, let me go ahead and kind of finish this part here. And this is where it will get interesting. So I'm going to, this is like a really rough section. And, and so, and maybe there's a, a hidden, maybe I do that. Let me make a, another chamber here at the end, like so, but maybe there's a hidden door here. And this is where I'll start doing some. some more rooms that are manufactured, are engineered. And they don't have to be at uh, right angles, they can also come down at different angles too. Another thing I like to do sometimes is I do like alcoves. So you just kind of do these little, this would be a good spot to put a hidden door later, but so we'll do that and this will, this will go like right up against, this is a good place for a, some kind of good uh, entry or not entry, but uh, throne room, something like that. Um, this is my rough draft also. I'm, I won't claim that this is going to be the final thing because what I'll try to do is make these a little more consistently sized. But we're just kind of going through this quickly here. Creating a mirror image. Um, and then we'll actually bring this all the way up to here. Okay, so that is that. And then we can start creating some, some like side rooms. So maybe over here we actually have a few rooms that we will small room as I as I go through this I will oops I didn't mean to do that but we'll just go with it I will I'll find things that I don't do the way that I want them to be so I will come back and I'll fix them later so that'll be the case here And I'm anticipating having some doors in here. And maybe I'll actually leave a, a rough stone column in the middle of this. Um, and I gotta remember that I have, this was actually gonna be a secret door. So I really should keep that. Otherwise I'll forget. It's a little tight quarters there for me, but it'll work. And I'm going to just kind of draw this one out now at this point. Oops. And we'll have this one open up into a large chamber like so. And let me go ahead and put another stone in there. All right, there we go. So that is our rough draft. Let me um, let me save this.
All right, so I'm gonna rename this one to be wall edge. And this is where it gets fun because I still have another layer here. Now the trick with this wall edge is that I have, um, you can see the grid all the way around and we don't really want that. There's a few ways of going about this. I like to draw my maps so they have the most flexibility to change them later without causing, without having to redraw a lot of stuff. And GIMP is great because it has layer masks. So what I can do is I can take this wall edge and I can add, sorry, not the, uh, not the wall edge. I want to do this to the dotted grid because the grid is what I want to cover up. I want to cover up the grid that's in the areas where it's like stone. So I'm going to add a layer mask to it. And you can see that now I have this, this layer mask out here. Then I'm going to come up to my wall edge and I'm going to use the fuzzy select tool, uh, which next time I will make it so you can see these little pop-up windows, but it's a U that you would select. And I'm going to click in the areas that I want to cover up. So I want to cover up wherever there's supposed to be stone. So I'll start up here and you can see that it put the marching ants and selected that area. Now it's when I select other areas, it'll add to that selection. So I'll click over here and here's more stone that has been selected. And then there's this area in here and that has selected most everything else. The only thing I haven't selected is this interior of this rock right here. And then these two rocks, I believe I got everything else. Now it kind of looks like everything is selected at this point, but it's not, it's just selected the areas where there's stone. And then I'm going to come down to my layer mask. And the way the layer mask works is that anything that's white in the layer mask will be transparent. So, or you, you will see, it will not be obscured. Anything that's black will be obscured. So I'm going to set the color to black and then I'm going to set my bucket fill. And then I'm going to come over here. And because I have this selected, when I do the bucket fill inside the selection, it's only going to fill that color inside the selection. And I'm highlighted on my layer mask, which means it's only going to put this fill on my layer mask inside where the selection is. So if I go ahead and do that, you can see that now my layer mask actually shows that it's put black everywhere where I had it selected. And everywhere where it's black, you can't see that dotted grid anymore. So it's there, you just can't see it. And so we can, I can prove that by, if I just take a brush and let's say that I, I make this a, a white brush, okay? And I come over here and I draw, because remember if it's white, then it allows you to see what's there. So if I draw with this white brush, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the grid showing through, okay? And, but, and then I'll undo that and because it's black, so it's blocking it. So it's all still there, it's just you can't see it. So this, this actually is the type of thing I will use for when I'm making a preview map or putting it in my adventures, I will use just this one because it looks like it's a, because uh, I don't really need anything more than that for, for the base black and white ones. But to be fancier, what I really would like to do is have some stone. I, I, if I'm making a color map, what I want is for these areas here where it's supposed to be stone, I would like to have something that looks like stone. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna go to this layer that I'm not using yet, and I'm gonna call this one stone. And again, you won't be able to see the, the specifics, but I'm going into filters, render, noise, and cell noise. And you can see it puts this like bunch of dots out there and obviously they're just covering everything. But that's okay, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then go to another filter and first I will make this look a little better. I'm gonna select, the, there's an artistic filter called water pixels. Sometimes this one takes a little while to to render it has a preview so it takes a second but you can see there's oops there's the water pixels and so that that really kind of looks like stone you know you get this um it looks like rock just by default so by taking that cell noise and then converting into these water pixels which it basically kind of turns it into a watercolor type uh, effect um, there's some settings that you can do on it to make it different um, but i'm just going to go with with that one and what I'm going to do then, and I'm going to do something else here now too. Uh, there's two things I'll do. So I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to call this one stone edge. 
and so first of all let me let me do the same thing that I did with the to get rid of the grid on my stone I'm gonna add a layer mask but this is gonna be the opposite because now I'm not wanting to block out the part that's the stone I want to block out the part that's the the actual places where the characters will be walking but it's the same thing I'm gonna to go to my wall edge and I'm gonna do the fuzzy select but this time I'm gonna fuzzy select inside the the area so now my selection is inside this area and I have to do it over here as well because I have a secret door here that's blocked so that has selected everything inside this area so now I'll come down to my layer mask inside the stone and if you remember when I have if I fill it with black it blocks that it makes it so that you can't see that particular part of this layer so I want to obscure all of that on here so I will fill this area with black and now you can see through it and you can see the the grid with my floor there now I'm going to keep that selected because I want to do something else here um, uh, actually I'm going to I am going to unselect this because I want to do a different I want to do this differently so this is my the main stone now I'm going to try a, a different thing that I do sometimes to try to add an extra little thing um, if I go to back to my wall edge and I'm going to select now again the stone part of it and I got to go make sure I get all the different areas in there and there so I think I got them all then I'm going to come back to my stone edge and I'm going to do the same thing I did to generate the stone I'm going to go to uh, render and noise and cell noise and but it's just going to put it in the areas that I have selected it's not putting it in any of the other areas and there's a reason I'm doing that um, that I hope will become apparent in a second the next step that I had when I did the stone was that water pixels so I'm going to go back to the water pixels and when I do that here the hopefully it does it um, I don't know that it did it um, I, I it didn't quite do it the way I wanted it to uh, I'll have to look at that one what it will do sometimes and maybe I'm missing a step and I got to go check my notes on it but what will happen is it'll and then if I select none um, what you get is a um, an edge a, a more distinctive edge that goes up against your walls and it really makes it it makes those walls pop a little more because it looks like they've really been carved out so this one didn't quite do that the way I wanted to. I'll have to go back in my notes. I think there's a step I'm missing, so I apologize for that. All right. So there we have, we've gotten to the point of, we got our stone out there. There's a few things more that I do uh, as a basic thing. The next thing is to do some shadows. So let me add another layer here. Um, we're going to put this underneath, I want to put this one underneath the stone. And we're going to call this wall shadow. Come back to my wall edge, do the fuzzy select, and we will select the main areas. And then we'll go down to wall shadow. And I'm going to make my brush be one of these brushes that's a little, got a little haze around it. So like this one, where it's a 50% hardness, so it's not... It's not a hard edge. It's got kind of a, a feathered edge on it. Um, and then I'll leave the amount of jitter at 50. Make sure I've got a black brush. And then I'm going to do this stroke selection again, just like I did uh, when I was making that grid. Using that brush, and let's see what we get. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little so I can see it a little better. Um, that's not bad, but it's a little... Uh, it's not quite big enough. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And I think I want to turn off some of that jitter, so I'm going to knock it down at 0.25. And then we'll do the stroke selection again. This is the nice thing about GIMP, is you can just kind of try different things. All right, that looks better to me. Um, I think I want it to be just a little bit bigger, though. So this time I will just go to 100. And let's do the stroke selection. Okay, that, that I like better. So by doing just a little bit of a jitter, you can see it's not a straight line, which is important, I think, because if you're going to have shadows, they're not necessarily going to be straight. They're gonna, there's going to be imperfections. Um, but, and uh, let me 
select none. Now, obviously, when you look at that, you you say, okay, that doesn't look like a that doesn't look like a shadow just yet. But that's where the layer opacity comes in. If you set this opacity down to like 50%, um, 25, I'll go with 50. I think I maybe made that shadow a little too big now that I'm looking at it. Um, but you can see there, it kind of it kind of gives a little bit of depth to the walls. It looks like the walls are not necessarily touching the ground, so it gives it gives a little bit of depth to it. Um, I think I went too far with it. I'm going to do see if I can undo the stroke. I'm going to go back to go back to my 75. Sorry. And stroke the selection. Okay, and then set this to 50. Okay, yeah, I like that one better. It's it's maybe still a little much, but but it's better. So there we have a little bit of wall shadow gives it some some depth. You can come back and tweet it if you tweet it, tweak it. If you have a light source that you're wanting the light to originate from one area or another, you can always go and erase the shadow on one side because there wouldn't be a shadow where that light source is, but it doesn't, you know, just as a starting point, that works pretty well. Um, it gets a little tricky with some of these where you get a shadow right, you know, right up against each other like that. But I think uh, I think we're good. The next thing we'll add is let's do some floor texture. So I'm going to put a layer above the background. And so the background, if I get rid of it, you can see it's just transparent. So I want to add another layer here, but I want that layer to be um, right above the background. This time we're going to do a render of noise and we're going to do this plasma noise. And this is going to look really weird because it's, it's color. And I'm going to do uh, a new seed. Uh, just randomizes it and then I'm going to increase the turbulence to make it so it's got a lot of different changes in there. So I'm trying to find a seed that has um, that one. I'm going to go with that one. The I believe the the bluer colors, these really dark ones, when I change the coloring in a second, those are going to be a lot darker than these. So um, let me just do the... Um, Colorize, where is it? Um, colorize. And not that color. And I'm just going to make it like something like this. Make it a pretty light colored stone. So something like that. So that kind of also enhances your, your shadows because now not every chamber looks exactly the same. And so it's this floor texture but it also helps to kind of give this illusion of some shadows within the, the environment as well. And so I'm going to call that one floor texture, though that's not entirely what it is. And, you know, there we go. That's kind of a, a high level view of, of what we've got here. There are some other things that I do sometimes. I won't go into those right now with, uh, you can add some hatching to the edges that uh, there's a mosaic tool that lets you add some of that. Um, and we haven't put any water or anything and I've, but I do do have those on some of my maps. I haven't added the walls, oh, excuse me, the uh, doors to any of these chambers. And, you know, usually this is how I do the maps. I will draw the map first and then I will go through and try to figure out what goes here. What, what is this place? And I'll come up with a theme. I'll come up with who's who is currently occupying this. What kind of lair is it? Is it a is it a temple? Is it a, a um, hideout? Um, is it some kind of sanctuary or a laboratory? Uh, whatever it might be, I'll think about all that stuff. And then, depending on what it is, I will look at the the rooms and come up with appropriate things for the room to do. Um, and then just decide which of them need doors and which ones do not. Uh, and then for the hidden wall, which I didn't do it here, but I'll usually go to those edges and I will I will make them um, thicker. So, oops, that's way too big. I didn't reset the size. It's supposed to be 15. So I will make these walls bigger or thicker, I should say. So that if you're using this in like roll 20, um, 
it's not obvious that there's a there's a room right over here you can have your you can have a uh, fog of war that goes over here but it's not completely obvious that there's a hidden hidden area there um, I also don't have anything in here that's like stairs so let me just talk real quick about stairs stairs are in some ways the the bane of my existence so I don't do any jitter with stairs there's there's two ways that I do stairs and I'm not sold on either one one of them requires me to do a bunch of shadows and try to make it look like it's part of the environment the other way is the way that I tend to I think I prefer at this point um, and that is to just kind of use the old school approach of I'm just going to draw progressively smaller lines and I will start with larger ones so let's say that I'm going to have this is going to be a staircase going down and these are usually imperfect and I got to make sure I don't go too fast and then I'll size those down to a slightly smaller brush and and then kind of keep going and then oops I, I didn't really want to do that that one down there but this is why stairs are, are just a big pain because getting them to look consistent can be difficult and so then I get my smallest size here but this this approach I like because it gives you the it, it lets you know there's stairs there um, you don't have to go too much further with it to say oh there's stairs right there and then if I turn off the the texture and the wall stone um, it fits pretty well oops turned off the, the wrong thing um, I still turned off the wrong thing I want to turn off that so and get to a real old school style map like this one then the stairs fit in just fine they look they file follow the same type of uh, look that you would have in an old school map uh, when you add in the other things it can maybe you know be stand out a little more but I think it's acceptable for for just the idea is to convey that we've got stairs here um, the other way that I do and I'll just erase those um, is to do um, I usually use a, a pen with ink for this but is to do kind of this freehand like drawing of stairs where I kind of make this little arch and thing and I still try to get the um, that where it's getting smaller and smaller as it goes down to show that it that it goes down and those look pretty good but you can you know tell that they're they're just floating above it and so what I end up having to do is add then another layer where I do that shadow thing and and that's where it just gets a little it just becomes more of a of a of a pain to have to draw this um, actually I need to set the opacity to to the 50 because these are supposed to be so if I then you know and I'm basically just drawing a shadow like I did for the walls and I'm just following that curve I'm just doing this freehand with the mouse to try to follow the the step and having that shadow there just adds to to help show that this is the downside the, the shadow is going to be lower than than the upside so that's another way that I do stairs I think I'm leaning more towards doing it the first way that's the more old school way um, you know I don't know what do you think <laughs> what do you have a preference it's uh, I, I'm still torn I go back and forth depending on the map that I'm doing and uh, um, I've had some other maps where I've got tons of stairs in them and it gets uh, a little tricky because the, the key thing with stairs is you have to keep track of your actual elevations and so in this case I've got this part here and I've got stairs that are going down three grid squares and so this part is clearly lower than this part so what I have to do is remember that because 
let's say that I wanted to draw, what if I wanted to connect over here? Well, I can't just connect over here. I would have to establish that there are stairs over here. Um, it's uh, and it, So that can be a little tricky because now every time I got stairs that are going down, if I connect that area somewhere else, I got to have stairs that go back up again. So, um, and I have had some maps that I've done where it's, uh, I've had a lot of that to keep track of. Another thing that I do, uh, and this is also where it gets interesting, is that, so, um, the farther down you go into a dungeon, the darker it would seem. So just to help convey depth, you go down further in the dungeon and it's darker. It's further away, it's darker. Uh, mentally, that's what it looks like. So a lot of times what I will do is I will, I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my walls here and I'm going to select inside here. And then I'm going to do this free select where I'm going to subtract the, the parts that are not. So I'm going to subtract from the base of the stairs, all, all of this stuff over here, because those are all at the same level. Okay. But now I've got all of this selected. So what I want to do is, did I, I think this is my new, yeah, that's that layer. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to, I want to make this just a little bit darker than everything else, just to kind of help sell that I have descended into another layer. So to start with, I've got it highlighted. I've got a brand new layer and I'm going to do just a fill of just black in here. All right. And now that I've got that drawn, I can do the unselect and you can see that it's, it's black. Then I can use the opacity to change the darkness to something just a little, just a shade darker. So it looks like maybe, maybe I go to like 30. All right. And now that part of the dungeon looks just a little smaller or a little, you know, like a little deeper in. Now I've got this hard edge here, which I don't like. So what I can do is I can use my smudge tool and reset that and then kind of just smudge that up and you won't see it as a hard edge anymore. It becomes this softer edge. So, so there we go. Now we have that section of the dungeon now because it looks just a little bit darker, seems like it's a little farther down. And that comes into play uh, if you've got a real multi-level dungeon, you'll use that a lot to, uh, to help show that the different depths that you have. All right, cool. Let me save that. Um, and that is our dungeon. I don't have a name for it yet. I don't know what it's for. Um, I do save it because some of these, some of them I just use for, for demo purposes and I don't do anything else with them. Other ones that I like, I will use for, um, for something and I will design an adventure around them if I feel that the dungeon is worthy of, of doing that. Some of them I might rework. They might be close, but I want to change a few things and then I'll, I'll redo them. Um, but they're just fun to draw and, you know, I'll, I'll go into more detail on some of them, you know, before I use them in an adventure.